Hello everyone, a very good evening to all of you. I am Gulapsa, your mentor, and I welcome you once again to another special session whereby today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic. I hope most of you must have read this somewhere in the newspaper or on the RBI website. So today we are going to discuss in detail what is the impossible trilemma or the international monetary trilemma. Kya hai trilemma hai? What are the components of this trilemma and why the word trilemma is associated with this uh, term. Okay? And why are we studying this? So there are two obvious reasons. First, in your Mint newspaper, um, an opinion-based news article came whereby the person talked about the impossible trilemma and how it has affected our sovereignty over the monetary policy. And second is that RBI has recently released a working paper on this international monetary trilemma whereby it has tried to compare the trilemma based on how does it cost the flexible exchange rate. So, how does it impact our flexible exchange rate mein? and independence of our monetary policy in this flexible exchange rate regime. So, without any delay, let's get started. But before that, if you have still not downloaded our app, you can do so by going on to the Google Play Store. So, any kind of exam updates, live video sessions, etc, etc. All of these features are available on the app and you can make utmost use of these features in order to enhance your performance. So let's get started with the very interesting topic, the impossible trilemma. So there are various names attached to this term known as the impossible trilemma. This is an unholy trilemma. Unholy trilemma or the impossible trinity. So impossible trinity, unholy tr uh, trilemma or unholy trinity, then the impossible trilemma, the international monetary trilemma, all of these say that if any government or the policy makers try to achieve these three features together, then they are not going to achieve this because at one time for any government, it is just possible to achieve two at a time. So simultaneously, others do goals go pursue kar sakte ho. What are these goals? The first goal is having a fixed foreign exchange rate. Not necessarily a fixed, but a stable foreign exchange rate. Agar aapke pa stable forex rate hai that is one goal that any central bank all over the world would try to have for its economy so that there is stability in its economy and the second goal is having a free capital movement any kind of inflows and outflows of capital in the country is welcome and there are no and there are no kind of capital controls now one question for you now in india what is the status of capital flows is it freely available and or are there certain capital controls on the movement of capital in india okay and second name the committee which is associated with this capital control or free capital movement in india with respect to india so aap in dono ke answers mujhe comment section mein bataoge now moving on to the third goal third goal says that we should have independent monetary policy as you all know monetary policy is the internal thing of the rbi that is that, that it does in the domestic economy so having an independence over our monetary policy is the third goal or objective that any central bank all the policy decision makers would like to achieve. So this international financial trilemma is a concept that is that has emerged in the international economics and finance that says that it is impossible to have all these three goals together at one point in time. Simultaneously, you cannot have all of these. At max, you can have only two of the above mentioned goals. So, at time, pe bas ab do le sakte ho. it can be in any manner. Either you can have a stable exchange rate with free capital flows or a free capital flow with an independent monetary policy or a fixed or a stable foreign exchange rate with an independent monetary policy. Tino Q nahi possible hai, usko hum discuss karenge in the coming slides. Now who proposed or who coined the term impossible trinity and how 
did the concept of impossible trilemma emerge? So there are two persons, two names associated with this theory. First is the John Marcus Fleming and second is Robert Alexander. So during the time period of 1960-63, they propagated that there is something called the impossible trilemma whereby the governments and the central bank across the country, no matter what, whatever they try, they will not be in a position to achieve all the three goals together. Okay? And therefore, this model is also known as Fleming Mundell model. So this rakhna whenever there is a question in the examination regarding Fleming Mundell or if there is a reference to this Fleming Mundell, then you should know that it is related to either stability or forex. It is related to, to the three rules, stability with respect to the forex rate, then the free capital movement and independent monetary policy. Now these three goals are important and you should know and it should be by heart. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's move forward and talk about the three uh, objective that you can pursue as a policy maker or a government. Three objective was the permutation in the combination says either one, two, two and three or one and three. One, two, three nahi ho sakta. The first, as I have mentioned, having a stable exchange rate with free capital flows. Second phase, independent monetary policy with free capital flows or a stable exchange rate with independent monetary policy. That means there is no free or capital, no free capital flows in the third objective that you can pursue. Now this is the diagram that we usually make whenever we try to explain the impossible trilemma where we have free capital mobility, exchange rate management, the stable exchange rate and a monetary autonomy. These three are and we will have to pick only one side of the triangle. Either you can have A, what is A? Free capital and stable exchange rate or B, free capital with monetary autonomy or C, exchange rate stability with monetary autonomy. Now let's talk about this and let us understand why is this happening. Okay, so first and foremost, let's start with C. C is the start of C. What is in C? Mein we have exchange rate stability with monetary policy autonomy. For example, let us assume that there is too much inflation in the economy jo that we are facing right now. So because of too much inflation in the economy, it requires for the central bank that is RBI to increase the interest rate. Since there is lots of inflation in the economy and this inflation is because of increasing money supply and in order to control and contain this increase in money supply, the RBI has increased its policy rate. Just give a just interest rate in the economy has increased. So whenever RBI increases interest rate in the economy, this will result in decreasing the money supply. Okay? Money supply decrease ho jayega. Aap dekho, money supply decrease ho gaya, that means we are having a contractionary monetary policy. Independence in our past, we are having the monetary autonomy. Since we have written here, we have the monetary autonomy, so we have to do this. Second is exchange rate stability. Aap dekho. Now, because of this increase in interest rate, we have increased interest rate that foreigners, the, uh, the investors outside, are interested to invest money in India because overall inflation is increasing and differential, the interest differential is more. Or they find that we pay for the time when inflation is there, but we believe in the economy of India and we want to invest money because of increasing interest rate. They want to take advantage of this increase in interest rate because here the increase in interest rate is more than the increase in inflation. Inflation is more than they want to invest in India. So if they are increasing interest rate, so because of increasing interest rate, there will be increase in forex flows, right? People will be bringing dollar. So if more dollars are coming in India. Bahut zada dollar are in India mein. That means the demand for dollar will increase. Theek hai? Uh, demand for dollar. So people are bringing dollar. That is the supply of dollar has been increased. 
I'm sorry, supply of dollar has increased and the demand for rupee will increase. Rupee ki demand badhegi aur dollar ki supply bad jayegi. What will be the impact? The impact will be because of people demanding more of the rupee, this will result in appreciation of the rupee. There will be appreciation of rupee. Okay? But as you all know, appreciation. So what is stability? Exchange rate stability ka matlab kya hota? Exchange rate stability ka ye matlab hota hai that the central bank tries to manage the rate in such a manner that there is not too much of appreciation and not too much of depreciation. Bohat extreme nahi jana whether it is appreciation or depreciation because both is going to cost your economy. Agar bohat zyada appreciation hua and since our economy, the Indian economy is an export led economy, this will hurt our exporters and our competitiveness that we have in the international market will reduce. We will become less competitive because of appreciation of our rupee. Chike? So RBI do not want this increase in appreciation of the rupee. So, since you have the, you want to maintain the exchange rate stability, you will go on selling rupee. Ab rupee bechna shuru karoge. Thikhe? You go on selling rupee and because of selling rupee, this will result in increasing the money supply in the economy. I hope you have understood it. Now see the picture. Now you will understand it clearly. So, we had two. So, so see. We had monetary policy independence, just say what just say, we increased the interest rate. Because, because money supply in the economy was increasing, we increased the interest rate and this increase in interest rate led to our policy objective of reducing money supply in the economy. Okay? Suppose there was free capital mobility. Jitne investors I have sakku allow kiya, come to invest in India. They came, they brought forex with themselves and that resulted in appreciation of rupee. Okay? But if you, so if you allow full free capital mobility, free capital flows in your, in your economy, then that will result in appreciation of the rupee. That which is not stable. This is not stable, right? You want to maintain the level that you have. The reference is your dollar. So you want to maintain that level, but since it is appreciated, now you want to maintain your exchange rate stability. Usko maintain karne ke liye kya karo ki you start selling rupee in the economy, that will result in increasing the money supply. Yaha pe kya hoa? Agar exchange rate stability ki taraf bhaate ho, to aapka jo independence tha, monetary, uh, monetary policy autonomy jo aapke paas tha, that will be karte. Kyunki aapka objective tha, to decrease the money supply, but since you were supporting the exchange rate, this has resulted in increasing the money supply. Now take a second and try to understand ki maine aapko kya samjhaya hai yaha pe. It is important to understand and it's very simple. I hope you can understand it very clearly. Thik hai, samajh aagaya hooga aapko. So at a time you can just have two policy. Yaha pe humne capital flow ko allow kiya completely. So you have your monetary policy, independence and capital flows. In dono ke wajah se exchange rate stability nahi ho sakti. But if you want the exchange rate stability and the uh, monetary policy, that cannot have because either you can have capital flows complete with monetary policy or exchange rate stability with capital flows. Tino ho saath nahi ho sakti. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's move forward. C humne complete kar liya. Now let's move forward to B. B says monetary autonomy with uh, monetary autonomy with capital mobility. Aapke so, paas monetary policy plus capital flow ki free capital mobility hai. Now in this case we have already understood ki in dono ke wajah se what will be the result? The result will be you will not be having any stable exchange rate. Let me explain you again. Kaisi? Monetary policy autonomy hai, inflation economy mein increase ho raha hai, so you have increased the interest rate. Because of increasing interest rate, people have brought more of forex, which has led to increase in appreciation of your rupee. 
which is not stable theek hai if you try to make your exchange rate stable then you will have to give up on your monetary policy autonomy simple now the third one the a which says we are having an exchange rate stability with free capital mobility tino ek hi cheez se derive hai i hope aapko samajh aa raha hoga exchange rate stability with free capital flow says that since there is a free capital flow so money supply so there will be an increase in forex forex hamara increase or decrease ho sakta hai right now because of this there is an increase and decrease of forex now you want to maintain the exchange rate agar bahut zyada forex aa raha hai that means your uh, your rupee is appreciating theek hai उसको डेप्रिशिएट करने के लिए उसको स्टेबल रेट पे लाने के लिए व्हाट यू विल हैव टू डू यू विल हैव टू सेल डॉलर्स और यू विल हैव टू सेल रुपी और जब आप रुपी सेल करोगे तो मनी सप्लाई इकोनॉमी में इंक्रीज हो जाएगी तो आपका ये मॉनेटरी ऑटोनॉमी आपके पास नहीं रहेगा क्योंकि अगर आप उसको करने जाओगे कोई तीसरा बिगड़ जाए ठीक है सपोज बहुत ज्यादा सपोज मनी हैज बिन टेकन आउट कैपिटल फ्लो बाहर जा रहा है एफपीआई हैव बीन टेकिंग आउट मनी फ्रॉम इंडिया सो सिंस दे आर टेकिंग आउट मनी फ्रॉम इंडिया दैट विल रिजल्ट इन इंक्रीजिंग डिमांड फॉर डॉलर एंड इंक्रीजिंग सप्लाई ऑफ रुपी नाउ यू डू नॉट वांट दैट सप्लाई ऑफ मनी हैज इंक्रीज इन द इकॉनमी अब आप क्या करोगे यू विल स्टार्ट परचेजिंग द परचेजिंग द रुपी एंड सेलिंग द डॉलर इन दैट केस आल्सो यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू हैव अ monetary autonomy is case mein kya hoga you will have to mirror the policy of the anchor economy jisko aap follow kar rahe ho i hope this is clear to you aapko samajh aa gaya hoga theek hai ab dekho yahan pe ek cheez hai i said mirroring the anchor economy what is anchor economy anchor economy is the economy whose who whose currency you take it as a reference rate suppose stability in context of another currency it would be in case of india it is the dollar against which we try to maintain the stability suppose 1 dollar is equal to rupees 70 hai so we would like to maintain this as this stable exchange rate between india and uh, between india and the rest of the world so this is the stable exchange rate Now suppose if there is free capital flows, free capital flows के वजह से there can be either uh, infusion of forex into the market or people can take out money from India. So if uh, suppose more people are increasing forex, suppose more people are bringing money into India, then in that case you will have to mirror the मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी ऑफ यूएस उनकी यूएस की मॉनेटरी uh, पॉलिसी को आपको फॉलो करना पड़ेगा और आपको अपना इंटरेस्ट रेट डिक्रीज करना पड़ेगा सो दैट देर इज स्टेबिलिटी इन योर एक्सचेंज रेट स्टेबिलिटी लाने के लिए क्योंकि अगर बहुत ज्यादा फॉरेक्स आया तो एक्सचेंज रेट हमारा अप्रिशिएट कर जाएगा यू डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू एक्सचेंज रेट टू अप्रिशिएट इन दैट इज यू विल हैव टू डिक्रीज दी इंटरेस्ट रेट सपोज बहुत ज्यादा पैसे निकाले जा रहे हैं in that case you will have to follow or mirror the policy of us if they increase the interest rate you will also have to increase the interest rate dekho ye kaise ho raha hai now abhi ke example dete hain us ne interest rate increase kar diya to iska kya impact hoga indian economy mein people will try to take out money from india thereby causing depreciation of the rupee you do not want that in that case you will have to also increase interest rate in your economy so that these fpis these investors stay in your economy i hope this is clear to you so this is the impossible dilemma at one point you can just be on any of the arm of this triangle you cannot achieve all the three goals together i hope this is clear to you now let's move forward and talk about sterilization Now, sterilization is the term that is associated with this, uh, with the intervention done by the central bank in the forex market. So, what does it say? Let us first understand the meaning. It says that sterilization is the process of buying or selling bonds through the open market operation 
by the central bank to offset the effect of increase or decrease in money supply through foreign exchange intervention done by central bank in the foreign exchange market. Is the term of the word? Let us understand this using this. So, what is central bank intervention? Whenever our rupee depreciates or appreciates hugely, at that time, we, the central bank comes into the picture and it plays as a market participant and try to intervene so that the exchange rate stability is maintained. Now, this intervention by the central bank is known as dirty or the managed flow. It is not clear that dirty or managed flow is not clear. Now, suppose, Abhi ka jo example hai, if rupee is depreciating hugely, if our rupee is depreciating hugely, then in that case, what RBI wants, RBI doesn't want that our rupee should depreciate itna because we want stability. And why is the rupee depreciating? Because people are selling rupee in order to acquire a dollar. Okay? In that case, RBI will be acting the opposite and RBI will start buying the rupee. So, I will start buying the rupee so that there is a demand for the rupee and the depreciation. There is a slowdown in the depreciation of the rupee. What will be the impact? If RBI is buying rupee, in that case, RBI will be selling the dollars and these dollars will come out from the forex reserve that RBI is having. So, our forex reserve will decrease in the economy. Mein. The second impact will be the money supply, the rupee ke ch supply in the market mein because people will selling rupee will also decrease. This is the impact if there is huge depreciation in the economy and RBI intervenes. The second one would be if rupee appreciates. So if rupee appreciates, again RBI doesn't want this because RBI wants stability in the market. What is rupee appreciation means? Rupee appreciation means that people are buying more of the rupee in order to invest and thereby they are selling dollars. Now RBI will act the opposite in order to maintain the stability and RBI will try to sell the rupee. RBI will try to sell rupee and acquire the uh, dollars. Now the, the acquisition of dollars that is done by RBI will add up to the forex reserves that we are having and this will also result in increasing the money supply in the economy because selling the rupee will be infused in the domestic economy of India. Now, this increase in money supply can cause inflation, right? Too much money chasing too few goods. So, this uh, increase in money supply will result in increasing inflation. Is that kya matlab hua na? You can see here, forex reserves which changes over a hai, theek hai. Because RBI is intervening in the forex market. But do you see that while intervening in the foreign exchange market, RBI has actually impacted the money supply in the domestic economy. I hope this is clear to you. But RBI doesn't want its action in the foreign exchange market to affect the money supply. And therefore what RBI does is, RBI suppose money supply in the economy increases. So RBI Kavarega, RBI would try to now sell bonds. Okay, if money supply in the economy increases, RBI will try to sell bonds, where will be giving certificates to people and try will try to absorb the excess money supply in the economy. So either if there is appreciation, it will purchase, and if there is depreciation, uh, so if there is depreciation, it will sell, and if there is appreciation of the pay, then it is going to purchase. Okay? I hope this is clear to you. Appreciation ke case mein, it is going to sell. Now, whatever it is, so appreciation or depreciation of the rupee and intervention by RBI will result in RBI actually purchasing or selling bonds to a theme of increase or decrease in the money supply through the open market operations. You know what is open market operations? So, it is the process of purchase, selling or purchasing bonds through this method, the open market operation, in order to maintain the money supply in the economy. Now, if suppose there is increase in money supply, so RBI has been selling bonds in order to uh, offset the effect of uh, its central, its intervention in the forex market. This purchase and sell of bonds in the domestic market is what known as, what is known as the stabilization. 
आई होप सिविलाइजेशन क्लियर है अब मीनिंग को पढ़ो इट से प्रोसेस ऑफ बाइंग एंड सेलिंग बॉन्ड थ्रू दी ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशन बाय द सेंट्रल बैंक इन ऑर्डर टू ऑक्सेप्ट द इफेक्ट ऑफ इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज इन द मनी सप्लाई which has been caused through the foreign exchange intervention done by the central bank in the foreign exchange market i hope this sterilization is clear to you please meaning ko yaad rakhna this is an important concept now what i can see is there is a problem associated with sterilization for the problem associated with sterilization for rbi suppose karo in rupee so rupee has been appreciating theek hai rupee has been appreciating rbi do not want that what rbi would do rbi will appreciation ka kya matlab hua demand for rupee has been increasing so rbi will try selling rupee theek hai and acquiring dollar thereby increasing the forex reserves forex reserves hamare increase ho rahe hain and by selling rupee rbi has actually increased the money supply in the economy now since money supply has been affected this will result in increasing inflation which rbi do not want so what rbi does is rbi starts selling bonds into the domestic economy now this selling bonds causes several problems for rbi what is the problem so when rbi sells bonds to the people it is actually sub, sub up all the excess money supply in the economy but at the future date in future rbi will have to make payment for this now the payment will be in terms of the principal amount the excess money supply that it has sub up but apart from that it will also have to pay interest on this bonds आई होप ये आपको क्लियरली दिख रहा होगा और यहाँ पे एक चीज और देखो बिकॉज ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग मनी सप्लाई आरबीआई को इनको एब्सॉर्व करना है ना दीज बॉन्ड विल बी सेलिंग एट अ वेरी चीप रेट बहुत चीप रेट पे ये बेचे जाएंगे विथ हाइयर गिल्स वाई वुड पीपल परचेज बिकॉज द गिल्स ऑन दीज द गिल ऑन दीज बॉन्ड्स आर वेरी हाई सो पीपल आर अट्रैक्टेड टू दीज बॉन्ड्स ठीक है so in future rbi will have to make the interest payment this will actually increase the expenditure of the government so this is another problem this is the problem that is associated with sterilization i hope this is clear to you so this was all that i intended to explain to you for today i hope aapko samajh aa gaya hoga and so we talked about the impossible trinity and the concept of sterilization in case of any doubt you can write it down in the comment section questions related to this will be shared to you in the next class in the next session so that i just want you guys to remember this so that while in attempting the question you are fully aware and you understand it clearly so this was all for today i hope you enjoyed the session and take care bye bye